In this lesson, we look at how network appliances and other network resources provide an additional layer of information resource security. We will also look at how some devices add no protection at all, but are commonly used. You can download the script for this video from above or at the end of the video. Throughout this video, we will look at a number of network connected devices that affect security, hubs, routers, switches, PBX switches, modems, bridges, gateways, proxies, wireless access points, and unified threat management. It's a long list, so let's get started. Before looking at individual devices, it's important to be sure we all have the same definitions in mind. A broadcast domain is a logical segment or set of segments on a network in which all connected devices can see all broadcast packets. A collision domain is another logical network segment. All devices within the same domain can see all packets sent by domain members, including broadcast packets, or packets entering the domain from outside resources. A collision domain is commonly created with a switch. Collision occurs when two devices on the same network segment or collision domain attempt to send a packet at the same time. Reducing the number of devices on a collision domain with network segmentation reduces the number of collisions. As we move through this lesson, we will discuss the OSI layer at which the devices operate. This graphic shows the OSI layers. The video above provides a detailed look at the OSI model and its relationship to the TCP IP model. Take a moment to review the OSI layers. Repeaters, concentrators, and amplifiers operate at OSI layer 1, the physical layer. They extend the distance packets can travel over a network medium. They connect devices that are part of the same collision or broadcast domain. Hubs also operate at OSI layer 1. They enable the connection of multiple devices to a collision or broadcast domain. When a packet is received by the hub, the hub simply repeats the packet across all hub interfaces. Hubs were once commonly used, but they are not commonly found on today's networks, given the low cost of switches. As we see later, switches provide better control and performance than hubs. A powered hub can also be used as a repeater. Modem is an acronym for modulator, demodulator. A modem is used to convert between the digital signals created by computing devices and the analog signals used by telephone or other analog-based media. The graphic at the top shows the difference between digital signals and analog signals. While cable internet access is often provided by what is known as a cable modem, most cable and other internet pathways only use digital traffic today. A cable modem simply connects a consumer with the ISP. Now we move to the OSI layer 2, the data link layer. The most common devices operating at this layer are the bridge and the switch. A bridge forwards traffic from one network to another. It does this by looking at the destination MAC address contained in each packet. Because the bridge keeps a log of the ports out which each MAC address is located, it knows which port to use to forward a packet. For a detailed look at how this works, watch the video above. The video explains how this works in a switch, which we cover next. Bridges also enable connecting networks that use different network topologies, cable types, and speeds. Bridges maintain the same or very near the same speeds as the connected networks. Each network connected to the bridge is a separate collision domain. However, all connected networks are part of the same broadcast domain. A switch is similar to a bridge, but sophisticated switches can do much more to help secure the network. Switches always operate at OSI layer 2. Like a bridge, they create smaller collision domains and direct packets based on the location of the destination MAC address. 
Layer 3 switches also operate at OSI Layer 3. This enables creation of VLANs with network segment access controlled by VLAN access control lists. Because these switches operate at Layer 3, they can route traffic between VLANs. VLAN segmentation can also reduce the size of broadcast domains. Depending on how configured, each VLAN is both a separate collision domain and a separate broadcast domain. For a detailed look at how to configure and manage VLANs, read the book chapter at the link shown above. Network segmentation limits what a threat actor can see when preparing for an attack. Segmentation also limits where a worm or threat actor can move based on packet traffic restrictions. Routers also operate at OSI Layer 3. They are commonly used to connect separate networks using the same protocol. For example, a router sits where the internal network connects to the Internet. Routers are also used to connect to multiple networks owned and operated by a single organization. Layer 3 switches are also capable of routing and are more often used for internal network segmentation together with next-gen firewalls. Routers direct traffic based on the IP address of the destination device. They also use routing protocols to determine the best path between the source and the destination devices. They can also direct traffic around failed router segments. Routing protocols include B BGP, OSPF, and RIP. View the video above for a detailed look at how these work. Gateways connect networks that use different protocols, so they are often called protocol translators. They certainly operate at OSI Layer 7, but there's some agreement that they also operate at Layer 6. According to the CISSP Common Body of Knowledge, a gateway transforms the format of one data stream from one network to a compatible format used by the second network. In addition to protocol translation, gateways can connect systems on different broadcast or collision domains. Different types of gateways include data, email, application, secure, and internet. Proxies isolate devices on one network from devices on another network. In this example, a proxy server sits between the internet and internal network devices. Devices on the internet can only see the proxy server and the proxy server's externally facing IP address. This helps prevent threat actors from directly accessing internal devices or mapping internal network configurations. Many internal devices share a smaller number of externally facing IP addresses. Proxies can also filter traffic, caching web content, and serve as a NAT appliance. Each side of a proxy is a different collision and broadcast domain. LAN extenders extend the distance limitations associated with cable types used. In other words, they act as repeaters and amplifiers. They can also connect networks across a business campus. Wireless access points, or WAPs, enable wireless device connection to a network. They can operate at various speeds. For a more detailed look at how access points work and the various speeds available, view the video above. Unified Threat Management, or UTM, devices combine multiple capabilities needed to protect network perimeters and network segments. This can reduce costs and simplify management. Security safeguards that can be found in a single UTM device include a firewall, IPS IDS, web filtering, web proxy, content filtering, VPN termination, and SIM or log management. A private branch exchange, or PBX, is a private telephone switch owned and managed by a single organization. PBXs were originally physical switches, but the move to voice over IP has also moved PBX technology to software. A PBX enables use of VoIP, ISDN, and POTS, or plain old telephone service, across an organization.
Well, that's it for this lesson. If you have questions, please ask. And until next time, be careful what you click.